Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Our headlines. Lebanon set to get new Prime Minister in Mustafa Deep. Peace agreement reached between rebels and transitional government in Sudan. Qatar announces reforms to labor law. Anti-racism protests intensify across the United States. And new report claims that 500,000 Kashmiri youth have lost their jobs because of digital apartheid. We begin with Lebanon, where the country's ambassador to Germany, Mustafa Adib, is said to be the next Prime Minister. President Michel Aoun asked Adib to form the government after consultations with various parliamentary blocs on Monday. 90 of the 120 members of parliament expressed support for Mustafa Adib. He received the support of the two major Shia blocs, Hezbollah and Amal, and the two major, and major Sunni political blocs, including that of former Prime Minister Saad Hariri. His predecessor, Hassan Diab, had resigned following massive protests in the aftermath of the blasts in Beirut port which killed close to 200 people and injured over 6,000. The AAP himself had come to power amid major protests that began last year demanding systemic changes in the country. The protests had forced Saad Hariri to resign in October. The formation of the new government takes place even as French President Emmanuel Macron is set to make his second visit to Lebanon after the blasts. As the process of government formation continued, popular and progressive forces warned against both interference and the continuing of the same old system. Lebanese Communist Party Secretary General Hana Garib pointed out that Macron was coming to stand behind the Lebanese establishment and help it present a united face amidst his fissures. He warned that the new government may be worse than its predecessors and won off to quote him direct confrontation with the Lebanese people and their uprising. The Lebanese currency has also lost more than 80% of its value since October 2019. Nearly half the population lives below the official poverty line and unemployment rates are nearly 35%. In our next story, in a significant step towards conflict, conflict resolution, the transitional government in Sudan has signed a peace agreement with the country's five main rebel groups. Sudan's transitional government and the majority of the armed rebel forces represented by the Sudanese Revolutionary Front finally reached an agreement on Monday. The SRF is an umbrella of different rebel groups active in the western region of Darfur and the southern states of Blue Nile and South Kordofan. SRF was formed as a coalition in 2011. It consists of the Sudan People's Liberation Movement North, which is active in the two areas, and forces in Darfur, including the Justice and Equality Movement, Sudan Liberation Movement's faction led by Abdul Wahid Al Noor, and another faction headed by Mini Minabi. Among them, the SLAMAW is not part of the agreement and has refused to take part in the negotiation until a civilian government is established and peace and stability is restored in the Darfur region. The faction, the faction of the SPLMN, led by Abdul Aziz Hilu, which withdrew from the negotiations on August 20th after attacks by pro-government militia in South Kordofan. The conflict between government forces and the rebels has claimed 300,000 lives and displaced 2.5 million people since 2003. Forging peace with the rebels has been one of the key goals of Sudan's transitional government which came to power in the months after Omar al-Bashir's overthrow in April 2019. In our next story on Sunday, Qatar announced a non-discriminatory minimum wage of 1,000 Qatari rials, which is around US dollars 274 for all its migrant workers. Qatar's Ministry of Administration, Development, Labour and Social Affairs also announced crucial changes in the country's infamous kafala system. According to the ministry, the employees will no longer need a no-objection certificate from their employers to change their jobs. According to the existing rules of the kafala or sponsorship system, an employee was not allowed to change his job or her job during the contract period without the permission of their employer. Now, the employee can change their job as and when they want to after notice period. Prior to Sunday's announcement, Qatar had a temporary minimum wage for its migrant workers, which was 750 Qatari rials. The announcement of a non-discriminatory minimum wage for all migrant workers, irrespective of their nationality, makes Qatar the first Gulf country to do so. It is now only the second Gulf country to have a minimum wage after Kuwait. According to the announcements, employers will have to pay another additional 800 Qatari rial, which is around US dollars 219 per month, 500 for accommodation and 500 for food, 500 for accommodation and 300 for food for their employees. Qatar has been in the limelight in recent times due to bad working conditions and mistreatment of migrant workers by their employers since the award of the 2022 Football World Cup contract. The Qatari government had announced several reforms previously, but activists have argued that those reforms have remained on paper and it's very difficult to implement them. Rights groups have been demanding an end to the kafala system altogether and the right to join trade unions as necessary reforms for impl effective implementation of past announcements. On Sunday, the states of Wisconsin and Louisiana have witnessed prominent protests despite the deployment of federal troops and emergency declaration by authorities. The police shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin, along with the killing of three other anti-racist protesters in the city by an armed gunman, prompted the continuing demonstration. 
A recent report revealed that over 500,000 local youth have lost their jobs due to what it calls digital apartheid imposed by the Indian government since August. The lockdown was put in place immediately following the scrapping of the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. As per the report by the Jammu Kashmir Coalition of Civil Societies, the JKCCS, the communications blackout in the region has been imposed as a collective punishment without even a pretext of a precipitating offence. It claims that the consequences of the shutdown were severe and losses suffered by various businesses during the first five months alone were estimated at Indian, Indian rupees 178.8 billion, with more than 500,000 people having lost their jobs. The internet ban was introduced with the stated goal of curbing mass protests in the region after the revocation of Article 370, which removed a special status. After it was scrapped on August 5, 2019, all communication in the region was snapped for a month. Though landline and mobile phone connections were partially restored later, internet data speed continues to remain throttled on mobile connections even now, says the report. The report also says, and I quote, there have been 226 documented internet shutdowns in Jammu and Kashmir since the year 2012. Currently, even the 2G internet access available to Kashmiris remains extremely precarious as local sh localized shutdowns of the internet are often accompanied by mobile phone disruptions. There have been 70 separate shutdowns in 2020, the report adds. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with major news developments from across the country. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, 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 yeah